Daily Update to be here with Kathy Davis, Chris Bosler of Davis Travelini LLC. I'm John Lee with uh, St. Louis Real Estate Investors Association, and today is February 26th, uh, 2021, I guess. So yeah. uh, welcome, everybody. Kathy, Chris. Everybody, it's great to see you. The first thing I want to do is um, tell you a day when we're, we're going to take spring break, and that's March 26th. Um, I'm going to, Chris is going to be coming back from being out of town and having to be in court, I think. And I'm going to be taking the day off that day and taking Max um, to the Science Center and what have you. So we're going to skip that week if that's okay. Sure. Um, it's great. Thank you. Things don't seem to move that quickly. So um, I want to start today with St. Louis County. They are supposed to be taking um, the applications for their new $30 million starting in March, which is, you know, Monday. Um, they don't seem to be in a rush, but we have been encouraging tenants who have been calling them to keep calling them and be persistent and that kind of thing in the hope that they can shake some money out. I was on our Zoom docket yesterday with our judge, Judge Medler, who we very much like, and um, we were um, the only people in the Zoom courtroom were myself and Christine and the courtroom personnel and the judge, and we were chatting with them, and then Judge Burton the infamous presiding judge walked into the Zoom courtroom and uh, he greeted me and asked me how I was doing. And I said, I'm doing great, except for the presiding judge forcing me into bankruptcy because he won't allow any evictions. Mm -hmm. And so everybody laughed, ha ha ha. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were asking him some questions while we had him about, um, uh, I didn't ask him anything about the eviction stay, although he keeps saying that they're gonna go to phase two. Um, he has told us that the sheriffs are in the process of getting vaccinated so that, um, you know, so that they won't get harmed by doing evictions. Um, every other sheriff in the state seems to be okay with it, except St. Louis County. Um, we, uh, he had said he was going to go to phase two by the end of February, but I don't think based on what he said yesterday, he's going to do that. He's talking about sometime in March and, um, uh, you know, it's a very bad situation, but um, we have done everything we can to change it. Um, in the city, um, we do think that the judge is going to go to that more quickly. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Chris in a minute for that part, but I want to say something else first. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this last week or not, but the state ERAP money that we've talked about recently, where they allow the landlord to apply, is not being made available to St. Louis City and the county because the state doesn't make anything available to St. Louis City and county. Um, no, it's because they felt like the city and the county were getting their own federal money. So they're only using that for other parts of the state. So if you are thinking about applying for that state ERAP money for city or county um, situations, you're not going to be able to do it. And, you know, we all weren't crazy about that program anyway because of the restrictions it put on it. You couldn't have a pending lawsuit, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I think... Uh, we're just not popular with Jeff City out here in our major population center. No vaccinations, no eviction money. Yeah, they don't like us. Um, I want to thank Dave Soto and Harry Lemie, who both separately this morning sent us a copy of the opinion in Turkle versus CDC. This is a federal district court opinion um, out of Texas. And I'm going to let Chris discuss that because he's read it more thoroughly than I do. But basically, it uh, struck down the CDC eviction stay. Chris, you want to oh, take that? Yeah, up? so yeah. this was, and it's even, as I can retell, it's even broader than that. It was a challenge to basically the federal government's authority as a whole to put a stop on evictions. So if you recall back in March, uh, a year ago, um, they did the first CARES Act stay on eviction for federally backed properties. And at the time, you know, we all kind of thought that was, uh, you know, not, not a very good argument, but nobody challenged it well, or no one successfully challenged it. Well, this is the first one we've had one go really go our way. The courts, I mean, they, you know, it's the, the federal government was trying to say that, you know, the, the way they had access to do this was because it affected interstate commerce, because it was a general you know, effect on the economy and this, that, or the other, the court said no. 
the only people, the, the court's ruling in this one says the only entities that can stop evictions are local and state entities, not the federal government. That's an overreach of federal power. Uh, so, you know, the we don't know which way this is going to head, but according to the order, the court says they are not ordering that the CDC order is in effect is ineffective or barred because the CDC and the federal government is supposed to voluntarily pull the order in response to this ruling. We shall see. Um, they could always, uh, you know, he did, did leave open the fact that they don't, that the plaintiffs in this matter, the landlords could appeal, and could ask him for an injunction and he seemed inclined to do it. Uh, so the, it sounds like you know, maybe the federal government is just gonna back down and say they have no authority to do so and, you know, evictions can move forward. Now that doesn't mean that that all of a sudden St. Louis City and St. Louis County are going to go, you're right, you know, we have no authority too, because that's not what the order says. But I do think it will, it's particularly I think St. Louis City, knowing our presiding judge, will give him some, uh, you know, some something to cover his butt to say, well, if the federal government's not going to do it, we're going to, we're going to pull ours too. Uh, I did talk to the city sheriff this week, or my, my city sheriff, and they aren't scheduling anything right now for March 1st when the city's order that expired. That could partially be because the city had a burst pipe after the freeze we had. And so they've been out of the courthouse all week, but it is possible. We haven't seen the next order come through yet that, I mean, frankly, you guys might find out before we do because the post dispatch tends to find out before I do about this stuff. Um, it could, the city could allow evictions starting Monday. Now, my guess would be the judge might give it another month. We just found out this week that the city received $8 million for landlord and tenant money. I can go into that a little bit. The um, 211 is the main number that you call and landlords and tenants can apply for this. They have expanded it from the prior CARES, CARES Act money. You can get $5,000 or up to six months rent and, and utilities, whichever is higher or lower or whatever. Um, and it can actually, you know, help your tenants catch up on utilities, all this other stuff, and you can actually start the application. I anticipate the tenants will have to play ball, but this kind of takes it so some of the tenant-led stuff that was slowing things down, if you're motivated enough, you know, I'd be calling, if you got tenants who are behind in the city, I'd be calling now, and I suspect that 211 is also how you access the county funds too, though I don't know that for sure. Kathy might know that better than I do, but I know that 211 you know, is the main, you know, the main number for the United Way, and they should be able to funnel you to whichever agency will help you out the best. Um, so I'd be calling now and getting that money before it goes away. And these funds, I don't know for sure, but they have less, um, less uh, strings attached than the state funds, meaning that, you know, it may be that you end up having to take less money to get the six months and let them, you know, and call them even. But, you know, for good tenants, I can't imagine you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't take five grand and just call it, call it square with them. Uh, but back to the moratoriums, it is my belief, as long as this court order stays in place from the, from the federal government side of things, that new evictions, and particularly in St. Louis City, and I don't, I don't know the county that well, new rent and possession suits, by the time you got done with them, I would be optimistic that you'd be able to use the sheriff to move forward with them at the end. And we won't be, be sitting there, you know, twiddling our thumbs waiting. So I can't, you know, obviously things can change things. You know, this is the first positive break we've had go our way in months, but the uh, it's good news. And I think the city was already trending towards pushing people out with the, with the, um, all the vaccines and whatnot. You know, I could see them against any other month, hoping to get more homeless shelters vaccinated and things like that. But uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. And if you have, judgments that you've taken in the past year that you haven't executed on it may be time to start talking about getting them prepared to use the sheriff because in st louis city unless kathy can talk judge stelzer into waving this your judge who issued the judgment or the court for you can just file for the sheriff so that's an extra I hope I'm not breaking up. It says my connection's unstable. Um, so that's that's an extra step you're going to have to take. So if you've got an old judgment, you know you may you're going to want to file a get something in front of the judge to file it, you know, to get him his his or her, his approval on that. And it's something that I'm hoping to avoid with Judge Stelzer, but it is you know 
something that I'm going to be doing a lot of work on here in the next uh, few weeks on my, all of my old judgments to make sure we can get them, get them moving. Yeah, we have a, um, we have communication going with Judge Stelzer to find out if we can keep the old executions. We know that's the fair way to do it. We, th I think we're going to persuade him to do it, but this whole thing, you know, with the water pipe bursting in the basement of the civil courts and everybody being turfed out of the building for a while, um, has given, you know, has put other things on their minds than us. Um, but I think Judge Stelzer is pretty determined to move the courts forward to be more normal in all respects. My son, Carrie, who some of you may know because he serves process for us, um, lives in the city and he got a jury summons for mid-March for the city. So um, if jury trials are back, that's big. That's really big. It's gonna be criminal trials first, but that's a huge step forward. Um, the news on, you know, vaccinations and COVID rates and everything seems to be good. So hopefully that will hold. Um, someone asked in chat about the county money. Um, Chris is correct that 211 is, is a good place to call. Um, I just looked at the county website and they are still saying they're going to release the details of the new program in March. Um, and they have a COVID hotline that is 314-615-2660. But I'd keep an eye on the county website for when they start applica taking applications for the new money. Now that federal CARES Act money is not the only resource necessarily. Tenants can apply through the 211 number and there are other agencies and organizations that have money from other sources that might be able to help them. Um, we have tenants who are continuously um, doing this process and saying that funds are coming. Um, so encourage your tenants to reach out to 211. Um, and with some of these agencies, they don't even have to qualify under COVID per se, they can qualify for other reasons. Um, I think business is as usual in Jefferson and St. Charles, everything's going fine there. Um, I don't know what else we have really. Chris, we have anything else? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, if the federal stuff's gone in St. Charles and Jefferson, I mean, it's pretty much business as usual. They haven't had, we haven't had a shutdown in St. Charles and, you know, knock on wood in months where they had any access. And Jefferson is, they've rebuilt their courthouse and put in barriers and stuff like that. And we haven't had any, you know, any of those shutdowns we were experiencing in the fall and summer there either. So that it would appear that, um, you know, everything is particularly if the CDC order goes away that pretty much everything will go back to normal out there and, you know, they'll be back to normal. And I said, I, I, I don't know what normal means for the city going forward, but I expect at least from eviction standpoint, you know, if the federal handcuffs go away in the next couple of months, we'll start seeing a fairly normal, you know, return to normalcy. I, I, I just, I'm not optimistic when, when I'm going to get back in person to the courthouse, which would make my life easier, but, uh, as far as being able to do your job as landlords, the tenants will be, I mean, believe me, you're gonna start seeing this ruling, you're gonna start seeing articles about floods of evictions again and things like that, but the tenants will actually, it should be pretty well known that they, they can't just sit and not pay you now. So hopefully that'll get some more of your tenants trying to get the aid, maybe even moving out now that they don't think the federal government's gonna protect them as much. But I, I don't, uh, that's about all I have today. Chris, can I ask a question? Sure. Sure. So on January 25th, I got a default judgment in the city with Judge Reuther mm -hmm. for wrongful possession. Is there anything that I can do or that we can do in the city when we have a current order such as that to try and get the tenant out? Well, I mean, the only thing I would suggest doing is filing your, your execution. Um, at this point, if my guess is that what judge probably gave you didn't meet the current exceptions of the judge's order. So you may be bound by the, the moratorium for a little bit longer, but I would go, I mean, when you file for these executions and there'll be a form you fill out, they can give you up to, you can put up to 90 days on the order. I would get down and file your, ex, I mean, probably on Monday and file your execution order with the courts and just to get in line because david is are you suing in your own name uh no it was actually through my property manager what's their name austin realty a-u-s-t-i-n yes um 
Um, let me just see if I can find the case. Yeah, it's, um, uh, let's see. It's uh, cause number 2022-AC11232. Hang on, let me go back to the different search method. Could you repeat that again? 2022-AC11232. Right, it's Austin Investments versus uh, Franks. Yeah, it looks like a rent and possession judgment. So that's the thing that they still have on hold right now. But um, I think it would be good for you to instruct your attorney to uh, file an execution and at least get going on that part of it. Okay. Yeah, because they can... Yeah, I mean, it'll be good for 90 days. And I would suspect, I mean, don't, you know, don't hold me to it if you're paying $38 twice, but the, uh, that they, uh, by the time 90 days is up, you'd be able to actually use that order unless something goes worse from here. Um, so the, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah. And you want to get in line. I mean, that's what I'm doing with all of my cases is bringing up all these old cases. And while a lot of them, we previously filed orders, we're trying to get clarification as to whether we have to refile or repay. But all the ones that we hadn't filed yet, I'm doing my best to call up all my clients and see, you know, who's still in there, who's paying. I mean, but luckily, a lot of my clients are telling me that people got they got ended up getting CARES Act money and are paying. So that's that's yeah. good news. Yeah. I don't know. Doubt. So about about 50, about only about 50 percent of my old judgments, I thought it was going to be higher. Do I actually need to move forward on still? So I don't think the backlog is going to be quite what everyone is fearing i think it'll meet and the sheriffs have promised me that once they get going they're going to be real quick about it so okay yeah she's she's been in there six months without paying so i'm mm. just really doing whatever i can to try and get her out yeah Got it. Um, yeah have your, attorney, have your attorney get the execution on file yeah i guess i have something also that i just thought mm -hmm. about for the people who um if any of you are appearing in st louis county if you've been appearing they've been using zoom they're going to switch over to WebEx um, sometime around the 1st of April. Um, WebEx is a little more clunky than Zoom. Um, so you might want to, but you can download it for free and that kind of thing. You might want to prepare for that, um, download it, maybe do a WebEx meeting with somebody so that you can practice it a little bit. A big problem with WebEx is with Zoom dockets, we go into a breakout room and talk to the person and try to work out a deal. With WebEx, the person can't go into the breakout room with you if their device doesn't have a camera. They can't call it just from a non-camera phone. Um, so uh, if you don't have a camera enabled device, you might wanna get one if you think you're gonna have to be appearing on WebEx. And um, you might wanna be prepared for uh, those eventualities if you're gonna be appearing in St. Louis County after the end of March. We have been vehemently opposed to this, but we have gotten nowhere with it. So it is what it is. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, that's an awful lot of good news. Well. Thanks a lot. We're really happy about the, this ruling out of Texas. We'll see where the, it goes with it, but um, that's huge. I think our problems here have not been CDC related so much as they've been local court related. You know, this is not gonna change what Judge Burton does in St. Louis County or what Judge Stelzer does in St. Louis City, or it's not gonna change it much. Um, it may feel, Judge Stelzer might feel that he has more ability to, you know, return things to normal with this backing him up. But Judge Burton continues to take the position that the sheriffs are too dainty to do evictions until they've been vaccinated. And that has nothing to do with this uh, court order. So um, I'm not sure what excuse he's gonna come up with after the sheriffs have all been vaccinated, which they're in the process of getting their vaccinations, but we'll see. We're hoping he'll at least open up some of the worst evictions to be allowed to be executed. So guys, uh, that's... Our thing for today. Hi, um, my name is Eric. I'm, I'm fairly new to the group. And Hi, Eric. 
Hi, nice to meet you. And um, so my uh, fiance is actually moving into my house and we were going to rent hers. So I was wondering, you know, from your all's perspective, if there's anything that we should be mindful of um, as we're going through this process, her idea is to move in here uh, in the July timeframe and actually rent her house, which is in St. Louis City. Uh, so I, I didn't know if there's something that I should, uh, you know, be mindful of and working through this whole process and, and putting a tenant in her house. Well, there's a couple of things that I think that you should think about. And I think that some of the other people on this call can help you with recommendations and, you know, that kind of thing. But the first thing is you want to screen the person, you know, really carefully. And um, one of those, one of the ways to do that is to look on CaseNet, but that's not the only way. Um, I would recommend a good screening service, unless by some chance you know the person or you know that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, there are some things that that we can tell you, Chris. Do we still have a sample lease we send people? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you uh, get with Chris after the call, our phone number is three one four nine six two eleven fifteen, and ask for Chris Bosler. He can email you the lease that we keep tinkering with to add, put things in it that we think are are helpful, like jury trial waivers and you know attorneys fees and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, Perfect. Yeah. So, to me, the big thing is upfront screening. Okay. Yeah. And, and there are screening services, I guess, that can do that for landlords. Yes, I think the people on this call are very knowledgeable about that, and maybe they'll okay. tap that into the chat or raise their hand and you can get with them and get recommendations. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Can y'all hear me? Hello? 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 Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Henry? Good. I've been working on trying to get audio. I couldn't hear it uh, when the meeting started, but my name is Henry Weekly. Mm -hmm. and, Hi, Henry. Uh, this is my first time on this call, so that makes me the baby of the bunch, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I met John Lee uh, about a year ago, just before COVID-19, and I'm trying to relocate to St. Louis, and I need a small place, a fixer-upper, and uh, John invited me to the call. I appreciate him. He's going to try to... Yeah, um, Henry, we'll have that. We'll have a chance to talk just after these guys are, are through with their update here. So just hang in okay. there and stay on the line, okay? All yeah, right. that's thank thing. you very much. Yeah, we we have time set aside for just for this. Yeah, we have okay. people. You have people here who will do that and will help you. But Chris and I are not among them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, we're getting our update first from yeah. from uh, these gracious people, and then we'll we'll get into that, Henry. I think Larry. Okay, thank you. Might have a thank question. You, yeah. Okay, Larry. Larry, are you there still? Um, I don't see. He had his hand raised and he unmuted, but I don't see where he went. Oh, well, shoot. Uh, let's try again. Okay. Okay. Well, Larry, if you get your you get yourself back unmuted, uh, feel free to ask your question there. Okay. Okay. So I think we're going to go and let you guys get on to your other business. Um, Thank you, Kathy, very much for, for all your, your weekly help here. Oh, we're happy to do it. We're happy to do it. And we'll see you guys next week. And maybe by then we will know more about what the effect of this great new case out of Texas is. And, you know, maybe we'll have updates from the city and the county that are better news. So everybody stay safe until next week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate your updates very much. And we'll look forward to seeing your smiling faces next week. Yeah.